Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. Exodus chapter 18, verse 11. Now I know that the Lord is greater than all gods. For in a thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. Freemasonry symbols in a 2,000 year old synagogue. This video is about how the ancient Israelites, the ancient Jews, were a wise, knowledgeable, and understanding people in ancient and in modern times. Modern Freemasonry dates to the year 1717 in England, but you can find the symbols that are used in modern masonry in 2,000 year old Israelite synagogues. We will start this episode off with Elon Musk tweets. This picture shows a stack of books on a shelf in a library. The books are all volumes of Edward Gibbons, The History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. This is a classic work of history, first published in 1776. It is a six-volume work that chronicles the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. The history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. So let's take a quick look into the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Volume 1 by Edward Gibbon. This paragraph is about the Jews, how they lived in the Roman Empire after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. New synagogues were frequently erected in the principal cities of the empire, in the Sabbaths, in fast, in the festivals which were either commanded by the Mosaic law or enjoined by the traditions of the rabbis, were celebrated in the most solemn and public manner. Such gentle treatment insensibly assuaged the stern temper of the Jews. Awaken from their dream of prophecy and conquest, they assumed the behavior of peaceable and industrious subjects. Their irreconcilable hatred of mankind, instead of flaming out in acts of blood and violence, evaporated in less dangerous gratifications. They embraced every opportunity of overreaching the idolaters and trade, and they pronounced secret and ambiguous imprecations against the haughty kingdom of Edom. According to Edward Gibbon, the Jews living in the Roman Empire sought out trade 
an industry to dominate the Romans. And they pronounced secret and ambiguous curses against the haughty kingdom of Edom. That was their name for the Roman Empire. The haughty kingdom of Edom. The footnote number five reads, according to the false Josephus Tesipho, the grandson of Esau conducted into Italy the army of Aeneas, king of Carthage. Another colony of Idumeans flying from the sword of David took refuge in the dominions of Romulus. For these or for other reasons of equal weight, the name of Edom was applied by the Jews to the Roman Empire. Edward Gibbon, The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, Volume 1. The port city Ur of the Chaldeans, located at the head of the Persian Gulf in modern southern Iraq, and one of the earliest cities to come into existence after the global flood of Noah. One of the major birthplaces of science literature, art, and civilization. Home to the temple, Ziggurat, dedicated to the moon god, Sin, where the worship of the sun, the moon, and the planets were observed. A place where mankind was elevated to the highest forms of knowledge, such as Pythagoras' theorem, but also the base to the lowest forms of activity, such as temple prostitution. Ur, a city of vice and corruption. But here was born Abraham, who was called of the Most High God to lead men back on the righteous way of living. Abraham, the Hebrew, fresco from the Dera Europa Synagogue. Date 244 to 245 CE is when the city was destroyed by the Parthian Empire. Ndara Europis Synagogue, 245 AD, Syria. The discovery of Dera Europis Synagogue, 1920 A.D. And the synagogue contains life-size paintings on its walls. The synagogue also contains a fresco of Abraham. The fresco of Abraham is in the red circle. As you can see, the fresco of Abraham in the red circle in the center. These frescoes are very colorful and they are 2,000 years old. 
And here's a close-up of the fresco of Abraham at the synagogue located in the Syrian city, Dera Europis. And these pictures are not just beautifully drawn works of art, but they encode knowledge. Knowledge that the most advanced minds try to decode in our times. Knowledge of physics, of math and science. Math science and technology that is used today to govern the world. The Israelites are and were the chosen people of God. They were the priests of God and the wisest of all the nations. The book of Barak Chapter 3, starting with verse 20. Young men have seen light and dwelt upon the earth, but the way of knowledge have they not known, nor understood the paths thereof, nor laid hold of it. Their children were far off from that way. It had not been heard of in Canaan, neither hath it been seen in Themen or Teman. The Argarines or Hagarines that seek wisdom upon earth, the merchants of Moran and of Themen or Teman, these were wise nations in ancient times. The authors of fables or mythologies in searches out of understanding. None of these have known the way of wisdom or remember her paths. So ancient nations who are famed and renowned for wisdom were not as wise as the Israelites. And I'm going to prove this. This is our God. And there shall none other be accounted of in comparison of him. The other nations worship the stars, the planets, other phenomena of nature. He hath found out all the way of knowledge, the most high God of Israel, and hath given it unto Jacob his servant, and to Israel his beloved. Jacob was possessors of all realms of knowledge. Afterward did he show himself upon the earth and converse with men, starting after the flood with Abraham. So Jacob, Israel, had all knowledge. So what may seem just like an ordinary painting has great symbolic imagery. Abraham with the sun, the moon, and seven stars, the Pleiades. Abraham and the sun. Abraham and the moon. Abraham, the Pleiades star cluster, seven stars. In one group, there's four to the left. On the right, there are three stars that completes the Pleiades star cluster. Today, when we 
research the history of the modern Freemasons. The usual start date is 1717. But unknown to most average Freemasons is that they, the Freemasons as a body, possess knowledge that predates the flood of advanced technology, advanced math and science. The ancient Israelites were the highest civilization that existed on this planet. The elite of our time study the advanced knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Israelites to rule, to manage, to govern, to build, and to understand the universe. The first president of the United States, George Washington, was a Freemason. Here's a lithograph, an image of George Washington as a Freemason. George Washington with the sun, the moon, and seven stars. George Washington and the sun. George Washington and the moon. George Washington and the Pleiades. The seven stars. George Washington and the comet that heralded the flood of Noah. George Washington, the first president of the United States. This lithograph is dated to 1866. Abraham, the Hebrew, and George Washington with the sun, the moon, and the seven stars, Pleiades. 2,000 years separate these pictures. And above Abraham, the Hebrew head is an arch. And above George Washington head is a arch. And this is an image of a Master Mason Diploma or a Mason of the third degree, a Master Mason's Diploma. And located in the Master Mason's Diploma, we can also see the symbols of the sun the moon, and seven stars, the Pleiades. The sun is located within a red circle. The moon and the seven stars, the Pleiades, are also located within a red circle. Beneath the stars and the moon, is a comet. The Freemasons has always been an organization of the elite. 
especially Europe, where the grand masters of each particular country was governed by its king. For instance, King Edward VII was grand master of the United Grand Lodge of England. H.M. King Edward VII, born 1841 and died 1910, and he was the protector of the craft of Freemasonry. This image is from the Museum of Freemasonry. Edward, Prince of Wales, later Edward VII, was Grand Master of the United Grand Lodge of England. The governing body of Freemasonry in England and Wales from 1874 to 1901. In this portrait, he is wearing his coronation robes over the uniform of a field marshal, along with badges for various chivalric orders, the Royal Victorian Order, the Order of the Garter, the Order of the Thistle, and the Order of the Bath. The rulers of the Dark Ages in Europe were Israelites. They kept themselves separate from their subjects by the orders of knighthood. If you were not in the club, then you were not one of them. And I would like to go back to my original subject matter of the Roman Empire. The magazine Fidelio, Journal of Poetry, Science, and Statecraft. The Fall 2004 Issue. The Fidelio magazine is from the International Schiller Institute. The Schiller Institute is a German-based political and economic think tank founded by Helga Zepp LaRouche with stated members in 50 countries. It is among the principal organizations of the LaRouche movement. The institute's stated aim is to apply the ideas of the poet and philosopher Frederick Schiller to what it calls the contemporary world crisis. Their constitution adopted in 1984 rails against international financial institutions and other supranational bodies without naming any for causing a state of tyranny in the world, especially amongst developing nations. So inside the magazine, a Shakespeare dialogue acting on the stage of history, reflections on Shakespeare as a historian, the Roman plays by Gerald Rose. And for those who may not have known William Shakespeare was a man of brown complexion. He was a person of color, an Israelite, William Shakespeare. And I'm not trying to say that only people of brown complexion are Israelites. I'm just trying to point out that his particular complexion was brown. You can be any color and be a descendant of the children of Israel. But for the record, William Shakespeare had a very brown complexion. The Shakespeare Funeral Monument is a memorial to William Shakespeare, located inside Holy Trinity Church at Stratford-upon-Avon in Warwickshire, the church in which Shakespeare was baptized and where he was buried in the chancel two days after his death. Going back to Fidelio, the magazine, 
history as ideology. First, take Gibbon and Mumson, who was a historian on Roman history. Gibbon and his monumental decline and fall of the Roman Empire writes a treatise of some 1,500 pages beginning with Augustus Caesar and going up to the 1453 fall of Constantinople. Two things hit you about this work. First, that it is written explicitly to teach the lessons of the Roman Empire's strengths and weaknesses to train the then current British imperial leaders to avoid the mistakes made by the Romans. It is not some academic work. Gibbon worked for Lord Sherburne. The decline and fall of the Roman Empire was a teaching manual for the British upper class on how to rule the British Empire. The British Empire was modeled on or after the ancient Roman Empire. Going back to the article, it is not some academic work. Gibbon worked for Lord Shelburne at the moment of the emergence of the British Empire under the direction of the British East Indian Company and was part of the saloon or network think tank with Jack Necker which together with Shelburne created the inside-outside operation in France that brought down the pro-American French monarchy. He was one of the many lovers of Necker's daughter, Madame de Steele. It is clear that the intention of the writing, the decline and fall, was to learn the lessons of Rome so that the British Empire would last longer than Rome did. Edward Gibbon, in the image to the left on the top, drafted his history of Rome as a how-to manual for Lord Shelburne's emerging British Empire and helped Jack Necker bring down the pro-American French monarchy. Down left to right, British intelligence, Lord Shelburne and his agents, Adam Smith and Jack Necker. This is another jewel of history. Jack Necker, the finance minister for Louis the 16th was also a man of color, along with his daughter, Madame de Stahl. The image of Jack or Jacques Necker in the red circle and his daughter, Madame de Stahl or de Stahl. In physical appearance, Madame de Stahl could be compared to Lena Horne. Her father was from Geneva. So this is a comparison to show you that Israelites were always playing major roles in history throughout Europe, Africa, Asia, wherever any major thing was happening, Israelites were there. And men and women like Jock Necker and Madame de Stahl were descendants of so-called black Romans, Israelites. They're not really black. They're different shades of brown. But they were the children of these people who lived in Europe for 2,000 years and more. And this story is still about 
Rome, knowledge, elite, governing the world, elite men and women. So this article on Mayor Adams, NYPD, Commissioner Caban became Freemasons over the weekend. Mayor Eric Adams and City Police Commissioner Edward Caban were inducted Master Masons in a secret ceremony at Gracie Mansion. Adams, NYPD Police Commissioner Edward Caban and NYPD Chief of the Department Jeffrey Madre were raised as Master Masons, the final and highest honor in Freemasonry by the Prince Hall Masonic Temple on September 23rd, according to a Facebook post on the group's website. Tony Herbert, citywide liaison to the mayor's office, confirmed that the event took place and that he was there but did not comment on the mayor's attendance. The Freemasons are the oldest male-only organization in the world and have long been fodder for conspiracy theories. The ceremony was not posted to the mayor's public schedule, despite the fact that it was hosted at Gracie Mansion. A spokesperson for the city hall did not immediately respond to an inquiry. A spokesperson for the NYPD also did not immediately respond. Prince Hall Freemasons. Photos of the ceremony posted on Facebook show the mayor and his top police brass wearing white aprons representing innocence and upright conduct according to a Freemasonry educational page. The trio stood beside Grandmaster Gregory Robson Smith Jr. who oversees the Harlem based Prince Hall Masonic Temple, a meeting place for the Prince Hall Freemasonry, also known as African American Freemasonry. A call to the Prince Hall Grand Lodge was not immediately returned. Prince Hall Freemasonry was founded in 1775 by abolitionist Prince Hall and 14 other free black men who were denied memberships to the all-white Boston St. John's Freemasonry Lodge. Mayor Adams is in the center of the photo. Nat King Cole, W.E.B. Du Bois, Duke Ellington, Megger Evers, Thurgood Marshall, Al Sharpton, and Booker T. Washington are just a few of the famous Prince Hall Masons listed on the group's website. Membership has dropped about 75% in recent years from a high of 4.1 million people in 1959, when 4.5% of all American men were members. Conspiracy theorists have followed the Freemasons for as long as they have existed. The Eye of Providence found on the dollar bill represents the watchful care of the Supreme Architect for Freemasons according to the group's National Museum. George Washington, whose picture is on the other side, was a Freemason. Why would Freemasons use symbols that were found in a 2,000 year old painting? If the definition of the term elite defines 
the people in the world with the most wealth on the highest status, they have an interest in preserving their wealth, managing their wealth on an international level. Just like a company or a corporation, the world has to be managed and managed takes planning. So the elite of our world today have set up many organizations to help them manage the world. One such organization is called the Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission is a non-governmental international organization aimed at fostering closer cooperation between Japan, Western Europe, and North America. It was founded in July 1973, principally by American banker and philanthropist David Rockefeller, an internationalist who sought to address the challenges posed by the growing economic and political interdependence between the U.S. and its allies in North America, Western Europe, and Japan. The book Trilateralism is a book about the Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission and Elite Planning for World Management, edited by Holly Sklar. On page 23, there's a quote. To be sure, the fact that in the aftermath of World War II, a number of nations were directly dependent on the United States in matters of security, politics, and economics, created a system that in many respects included that of scale, superficially resembled the British, Roman, and Chinese empires of the past. So there were According to this quote, nations who looked at the United States for leadership and world control, and they structured the management of the world to resemble the British Empire, who used the Roman Empire as its model, and they wanted United States to also use the Roman Empire as a world model for governing and managing the world. The Roman Empire. British and Western European elites chose the ancient Roman Empire as the model for world management. And this is an image of the Roman conquest of Egypt, 30 BC. The Roman Empire was run or ran as an efficient machine that allowed them to conquer and rule different nations of peoples. They conquered Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa. They established trade with far away nations as China and India and explored far away countries and regions such as the Niger River of West Africa. 
the world that we live in today is a imitation of the ancient Roman Empire. 